Thank you, Madam Speaker. Time and again, and we'll probably hear it from the Parliamentary Secretary again tonight, we hear from the governing party that they're keen to move ahead with the Canada Disability Benefit. Yet once again, in Budget 2023, the only money allocated was to continue designing the benefit. Nothing for the benefit itself, leaving people with disabilities living in legislated poverty. It's why a few weeks ago in question period, I reminded my colleagues in the governing party what it looks like when the federal government is serious about a new program. I gave the example of childcare. First came the funding, then agreements with provinces and territories, and then the legislation. I shared how it's the exact opposite of how it's transpired with the Canada Disability Benefit and how disappointed I was and still am that it again wasn't funded in Budget 2023, despite billions more being set aside to subsidize the oil and gas industry or even to put a car on the moon. I asked why we should trust that they're serious about the Canada Disability Benefit in light of this. So many of my constituents ask me this same question, and I'd like to share with you just one example of a constituent I recently spoke with, Barb, for whom the Canada Disability Benefit would change their life. Barb and I spoke in my community office just last a Friday. I was told they wanted to discuss their advocacy for expanding medical assistance in dying to include mental health. We ended up talking for almost an hour. And what I learned over the course of our conversation is that first, Barb lives in legislated poverty, accessing the Ontario Disability Support Program, or ODSP for short. I learned that because of this, Barb has been unsheltered before and now is precariously housed. And I learned that Barb is keen for more mental health supports and like me is deeply disappointed the federal government hasn't funded the promised $4.5 billion Canada mental health transfer. And it's only in light of all of this that they are now advocating to be eligible for medical assistance in dying. Madam Speaker, I'll tell you what I told Barb last Friday afternoon, that I don't support medical assistance in dying for mental health, in part because I believe the federal government must do far more to support people who need it most. People just like them. And it pains me to know that there are so many people like Barb in my community and right across the country. People with disabilities who've been organizing and calling out for years for better. The federal government must listen to them. And they could start by funding the Canada Disability Benefit today. Failing this they could at least introduce a disability emergency response benefit, similar to what was done in the pandemic as a stopgap measure. And so my questions to the Parliamentary Secretary tonight are twofold. First, if the federal government is continuing to delay bringing in the Canada Disability Benefit, will they at least bring in a disability emergency response benefit to be sure that people like Barb have the support they need in the meantime? And if not, what will the federal government do to show that they really are serious about the Canada Disability Benefit? Thank you. Our Parliamentary Secretary to the Government House Leader. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'd like to begin by thanking the member from Kitchener Centre for his question and, of course, for his advocacy on behalf of Canadians with disabilities. Furthermore, I'd like to thank him for his excellent work in getting Bill C-22 through committee and improving that bill along the way. So thank you to the Honourable Member through you, Madam Speaker, for his tremendous advocacy and great teamwork. I want to especially acknowledge the work of advocacy of the Honourable Minister of Employment, Workforce Development and Disability Inclusion. The Minister has been working tirelessly throughout her career to promote the rights of persons with disabilities. Madam Speaker, the Minister understands that the challenges that so many persons with disabilities face each and every day. She understands that many working age persons with disabilities face a challenging income gap. That's why she's been working tirelessly to create the groundbreaking Canada Disability Benefit, which the member re referenced, an income supplement with the potential to seriously reduce poverty and improve financial security for hundreds of thousands of working age persons with disabilities. Like my colleague, the Minister wants to see Canadians with disabilities 
receive the new Canada Disability Benefit as quickly as possible. I remind the Honourable Member that, as set out in the legislation, details of the Canada Disability Benefit will be addressed in further regulations, including the benefit amount, eligible criteria, and other features. We will work out all of these details in consultation with our partners, including the disability community. And we will continue to work closely with the provinces and territories to ensure that the Canada Disability Benefit will align with the uh, uh, will align and complement services, benefits and supports. I am pleased to report that conversations in this regard are going very well. There is a shared commitment to improving the lives of persons with disabilities across this country. Madam Speaker, the Canada Disability Benefit has the potential to make a profound, profound difference in the lives of hundreds of thousands of working age Canadians with disabilities. For that to happen, we need to take the time to do things the right way. And that is exactly what we are doing. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honourable Member for Kitchener Centre. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. The Parliamentary Secretary correctly pointed out that the disability community will be involved in the design of the disability benefit because they called for it. Throughout the process of C-22, they made clear the importance of that, and so I brought forward an amendment that will require the government to meaningfully eng engage the disability community in the regulation. But what remains true today is if they really were serious, they wouldn't wait for this whole process of regulations and everything else. Just like childcare, they would start by funding it and then move forward with, with the rest. Why not do the same here? Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you, Madam Speaker. As I indicated to the member, um, the consultative process, which he understands and, and respects and agrees that needs to happen, uh, needs to be done in a way uh, that not just engages with the various different stakeholders, but indeed engages and aligns itself with the provincial delivery of similar services uh, to Canadians with disabilities. Uh, making this happen, although we would love to see it happen quicker, I don't understand why it would be suggested that anybody wouldn't want to see that happen quicker. Making this happen will take the, the necessary time to get it right. And what's most important here, Madam Speaker, is to get it right. And that's what we plan to do, and that's why we're going through the process we are now, so that we can bring in those regulations and various different stipulations regarding um, the implementation of this benefit uh, within uh, as quickly as we can. Thank you, Madam